Hello everyone, welcome to yet another session of the daily news analysis by Sri Ram's IS, where we take up the important articles featuring in the Hindu newspaper and break them down for our understanding from the examination point of view. So let's start today's discussion by taking the important articles from the newspaper which are on our screens and let's take up the first article for the day. <coughs> the first article which appears in the newspaper reads, reinvigorating the Chabahar port. Now the Chabahar port is most of us would be aware of the Chabahar port and it becomes a very important geopolitical uh, location uh, for us to uh, keep in mind and observe from the uh, UPSC examination. So therefore the Chabahar, Chabahar port has been very important and it has been important for quite some years but the developments with, re, uh, with respect to Chabahar port have been slowly developing and therefore this port keeps garnering news time and again. So what is the news right now? So earlier the developments of the Chabahar port, this is a port in the coastal waters of Iran which India uh, undertook the responsibility to develop. And so what is this port? Why did India undertake to develop this port? What are the important uh, parameters that India wants to ensure by this port? We'll take a look at all of that. And what is the status of the Chabahar port right now and it, it, with respect to India and Iran's relations between them. So we'll take a look at that as well. So let's first understand where is the Chabahar port. So Chabahar port is a port located in the country of Iran and it is a, it is located in the Persian Gulf and it is as we can see quite nearer to the Indian waters, Indian coastal waters. The important port such as the Mumbai port, the Kandla port, therefore the Chabahar port becomes very important with respect to India. Now where is it located? Located in the southeastern Iran in the Gulf of Oman. I am sorry, it, it was, uh, it's located in the Gulf of Oman and it is the only Iranian port with direct access to the ocean and it is located in the Sistan Baluchistan province on the energy rich Iran's southern coast. And therefore, it is considered as a gateway to the golden opportunities for trade by India, Iran and Afghanistan with Central Asian countries. This becomes the most important point for Chabahar port where as we can see that this becomes a gateway point to other countries such as Afghanistan wherein up until now if you want to trade with Afghanistan, we have to do it with the transit of Pakistan and that creates a lot of problems where the land route if we want to trade with Afghanistan, Pakistan can lay certain conditions and it does lay certain conditions and that is why it becomes important for, uh, difficult for us to trade with Afghanistan via the land route and that is why the envisaging of the Chabahar port and connecting the Chabahar port via the rail lines to Afghanistan and further to with other Central Asian countries therefore make the Chabahar port very important from the uh, standpoint of India with respect to the trade relations that can be developed with countries such as Af Afghanistan and other Central Asian uh, countries. So that becomes the major important point with respect to Chabahar port. What are the other important points? Let's see. So as we saw with this India can bypass Pakistan in transporting goods to Afghanistan. Next is it will also boost India's access to Iran the key gateway to the international north-south transport or transit corridor that has sea, rail and road routes between India, Russia and Iran, Europe and Central Asia. Now what is this INSTC or the international north-south transport corridor which the Chabahar port can also provide a great impetus to. So this INSTC is also a multi-country uh, uh, level a trade route which has all kinds of sea, rail and road routes. So let's take a look at that as well. Let's take, take a look at first the INSTC. So the INSTC or the International North-South Transit Corridor was first initiated in the year 2000 between the countries of Russia, India and other one other country. This was India, Iran and Russia. So it was first initiated between these three countries in the year 2000 in St. Petersburg and subsequently then included 10 other Central Asian and West Asian countries. So this is a multi, as I said a multi-country corridor which again is, uh, was uh, 
initiated to facilitate trade between these countries. So where the initial sea route becomes a long route which has to traverse from multiple regions the Mediterranean Sea and travel from the northern uh, Atlantic towards and then cross the Suez Canal, this trade route was envisaged to shorten up by this INSTC or the North-South Transit Corridor which through the land and rail routes would connect the uh, connect such countries such as Russia and the Central Asian Republics with uh, eventually India. So this was the INSTC. Now the INSTC also has a transit point in Iran and this is where the Chabahar port can also provide an impetus to the larger INSTC or the International North-South Transport Corridor. So this, this becomes another importance for Chabahar port. Then it also helps India counter Chinese presence in the Arabian Sea which China is trying to ensure by helping Pakistan develop the Gwadar port. Now Chabahar port also assumes importance as it is parallelly situated to the Gwadar port which is a port present in Pakistan and this port is developed by China and we all know the presence of Chinese BRI initiative arm that of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor which is again rail and road links passing through Pakistan and it passes through the POK region of India. So this CPEC is again connected to the Gwadar port and therefore the presence of Chabahar port which is very near to the Gwadar port less than 100 kilometers from the Gwadar port so, so the situation of the Chabahar port can again provide parallel presence to this port and therefore counter Chinese presence for India. This becomes another important part. Then with Chabahar port being developed and operated by India, Iran also becomes a military ally to India. Therefore Chabahar could be used in case China decides to flex its navy muscles by stationing ships in Gwadar port to reckon its upper hand in the Indian Ocean, Persian Gulf and the Middle East. This military aspect of the port is not the envisaged aspect. The primary aspect of the port is for trade related aspects or the trade purposes. This port is generally carried out for trade purposes but with respect to any contingency that may appear in the future, it might be uh, taken use in the military aspect if at all China decides to do so in case of the Gwadar port. So that can also become one of the use of the Chabahar port. Then trade benefits are galore where with Chabahar port becoming functional, there will be a significant boost in the import of iron ore, sugar and rice to India and the import cost of oil to India will also be considerably declined. So current cost that India faces to import crude oil, if the route to import this crude oil will also get efficient, so the cost of importing the crude oil will also go down for India, right? which has spiked up due to the recent Russia-Ukraine conflict. So these are the important points which are very important with respect to the Chabahar port and its control belonging to India. Now what does the article say? The article talks about the gradual development of the Chabahar port where the this actual agreement between Indian government and Iran it was initiated way back in the year 2003 for the construction of Chabahar port in Iran. But even after 19 years, this port, it, uh, it's not that this port has achieved its full potential and this has resulted, this has happened because of the flouting or the uh, fleeting tensions or fleeting relations between India and Iran. Because as India had approached to uh, make good relations with Iran, Iran, Iran not having good relations with the USA has therefore created a lot of roadblocks for the relations between India and Iran and that is why the development of the Chabahar port as well keep uh, kept see, uh, seeing many difficulties and even last year there was a news where China was said to be uh, uh, collaborating uh, with, uh, on trade basis with respect to Iran and therefore there was news that India might lose control of the Chabahar port. But within 2-3 months again the news came up that India is still in talks with uh, Iran with respect to the Chabahar port and now what has happened this uh, Union Roadways and Shipping Minister Sarbanan Sonowal is on a visit to the country of Iran and has met the counterpart in Iran and that is they are taking the partnership on the Chabahar port forward on 
many more steps. So that is the whole background with respect to Chabahar port and the important points which become important for, for us from the examination point of view, we took a look at that and they become important for us especially from the prelims examination and from the GS2 perspective where we take up the international relations portion. So with this, let's move on to our next article for the day. The next article which appears in the newspaper reads, the implications of the 5G rollout for law enforcement. Now this article appears in the backdrop of the arrival of the 5G in India. We have been taking multiple uh, discussions with respect to the 5G auctions as to how the major telecom operators have bought their uh, airwaves spectrum and are soon going to uh, release their 5G services in the month of mostly October or after that. So this article, the author in this article talks about the advent of 5G as to if the 5G technology is going to come in India, is going to arrive in India, it can have so, uh, may many benefits for the uh, citizens of the country and otherwise for everyone else. But at the same time, when such revolutionary uh, technology arrives with respect to uh, giving benefits to the citizens, it can also bring sort a lot of challenges to the country. And this in, uh, in this article, the author talks about the challenges that can arise for the law enforcement agents with agencies with respect to this new 5G technology with respect to cyber security and other such cyber security attacks. So we'll take a look at how the 5G technology holds immense potential to transform the cyber security landscape in India as well as pose a lot of challenges and how we can combat these challenges. So let's first take a look at what will 5G do to the benefit of this uh, cyber security landscape. So on the one hand, the 5G rollout is set to enhance efficiency, productivity and security by helping the police access critical information in real time and nab criminals. Now we all know 5G technology or the fifth generation connectivity technology is going to give us high speed internet with ultra low latency. Right? So which means that ultra high speeds of internet with less lag is going to be provided to everyone in the country. So with this, uh, ad with these advantages, even the police uh, and the law enforcement agencies work is going to be facilitated via the 5G speeds where earlier, where, where they used to take time to access information with the help of 5G, they would be able to access critical information in real time and therefore nab criminals then 5G has high bandwidth and low latency as we saw. So its adoption would ensure the best performance of police devices such as body cams, facial recognition technology, automatic number plate recognition, drones and CCTVs. Now all of these technologies can perform margin, uh, significantly better if they have the 5G technology or ultra high speed internet. So therefore, with the 5G services coming, these technologies which police or other law enforcement agencies make use of, they would be significantly better in their usage. But this the, uh, the, the problem would come where such infrastructure also needs to be developed. So the 5G promises to transmit clear image. So where up until now, the police uh, or the other law enforcement agencies were to make use of hazy images, they were not getting clearer images in real time, this 5G technology will enable them to access them. And the increased storage capacity promised by 5G will allow the police to streamline their investigation methods. Again, high speed internet and better connectivity is providing greater storage capacity. This storage capacity will also help the agencies. Then 5G will also allow rapid and secure communication within the organization as well as between civilians and the emergency responders. This also becomes a significant advantage of high speed connectivity and internet where the 5G will allow rapid and secure communication. So earlier, if some mishap or some crime was, uh, let's say the criminals had the opportunity 
to escape or to carry out their work simply because of the lag in communication which used to happen between agencies or between the citizen and the agencies this can be significantly bridged by the coming of the 5g so this also becomes a significant advantage of 5g then with 5g the police can remotely access and analyze crime data and information from other infrastructure such as traffic lights so this also becomes a very important advantage where sitting at one place due to the access of high speed internet and connectivity high amounts of data from various sources such as the cctv cameras and traffic lights and everything can be accessed by the law enforcement agencies sitting at one place itself so these are the benefits that can arise of the from the arrival of 5g but like i said with the uh, with the benefits that can be uh, uh, arrived from this new technology certain challenges can also come and what are these challenges let's take a look at that first is the challenges in adopting 5g now the government and the telecommunication companies must first ensure that law enforcement agencies have the necessary infrastructure to take full advantage of all that 5g has to offer this becomes a significant part to ponder upon where all of that we are talking that the increased connectivity and high speed internet all of the benefits that it can offer to these law enforcement agencies that can only happen when there is the state of the art infrastructure and the devices are available for the law enforcement agencies to make use of this technology so that needs to be given to them because even if law enforcement agencies get access to secure data from telecom operators they will still need tools to access the, this data to say so they need these important devices which are compatible with the 5g technology also most police systems are outdated and many not be compatible with 5g to bridge this technology gap the police must invest in modern tools software and infrastructure and they would require funds to do this so this becomes the first major challenge as to in order to utilize the benefits that the 5g technology has for the law enforcement agencies to offer they need their devices their infrastructure and their tools to be updated and compatible with 5g so that needs to be taken care of first then this is with respect to the logistical part now there are various concerns which can uh, which come up wherein let's say that there was earlier technology which was accessible to the citizens but now this 5g technology will also be accessible to the uh, criminal uh, activity uh, perpetrators or the terrorists who can make use of this technology so with every benefit that can come with the technology there are the challenges that also increase because this technology is also available to them as well so the challenges or the um, the type of crimes that could be committed they will also evolve and they will also take a new shape so new kinds of crimes will also be committed for which these law enforcement agencies have to be ready for and so earlier the kind of cyber security attacks that used to happen with the advent of the new technology these attacks will be of new nature would be of evolved nature and may even be secure and untraceable so all of that also 5g can uh, enable for these criminals so how can the law enforcement agencies tackle that as well we'll have to take a look at that so what are those concerns so deploying 5g when we have a shaky cyber security foundation is like erecting a structure on a soft sand that is the danger of not uh, able to deal with these new dangers or the new uh, criminal activities that can happen where our infrastructure of cyber security is not very sound so as the previous networks were hardware based india could practice cyber hygiene this was with the earlier sector but now with 5g it is a software defined digital routing this makes it susceptible to cyber threats such as botnet attacks man in the middle attacks or distributed denial of service overloads now these are the new age type of cyber security attacks wherein the botnet attack is of a, a one can say a bot or a, a kind of artificial intelligence based uh, software attacking the system then man in the middle attack means that uh, between the uh, user of the service or the software and the software itself the hacker poses a obstacle between uh, this medium and only after a payment of certain ransom 
or fulfillment of the condition that that hacker has put in front of the consumer or the user of the software only then the software can be used by him or her this is known as man in the middle attacks wherein it is prevented from the user to using the software or the service and distributed denial of service this is also a similar kind of attack where the system is hacked into and the kind of service is denied to the user and only after a payment of a ransom or a certain condition that has to be fulfilled as uh, uh, has to be fulfilled which is demanded by the uh, hacker or the perpetrator of such an attack only after the completion of it the service can be accessed so these are the new age attacks which get more and more potent with the arrival of 5g and if the cyber security foundation that is itself uh, shaky right now for india it is not equipped to the lines of these attacks it would be very difficult to deal with them then as 5g lacks end to end encryption what is the end to end encryption this is something which uh, the messaging apps such as whatsapp and other apps provide us which says that whatever chat or whatever messaging that happens between a person a and person b no one will be able to access that that is known as end to end encryption so since 5g would not have that hackers can plot their attacks more precisely and perpetrate cyber crimes by hacking into systems or disseminating illegal content so that also becomes added danger from the arrival of new technology then the bandwidth expansion we saw that this was a benefit of 5g where increased amount of data could be transferred but this will enable criminals also to embezzle databases easily so one man's benefit can be another man's trouble and therefore with time as 5g connects with additional devices the frequency of attacks also could increase this also could happen where if 5g promises interconnectivity between devices the same uh, service can also increase the susceptibility of attacks which can be if earlier were perpetrated in only one device now it would be initiated in many devices this is also one of the dangers of, of what we call the 5g uh, the, the iot system wherein the internet of things this is again a major breakthrough that is being promised by 5g that all the devices uh, electronic equipments and uh, such uh, such other devices can be connected through wifi and through 5g they can be operated now if all of these services can also be enhanced so the cyber attacks can also be enhanced for all of these activities so these are the many concerns that arise with respect to 5g and which can basically enhance and uh, one one can say increase the danger of the attacks of uh, cyber attacks and the uh, pre, uh, on their impact of impact on cyber security so what can be done as the author uh, points out all these dangers with the which which the uh, improved technology can bring the author points out to the way forward that we need to take certain measures in order to be ready for these new age attacks and the newly added dangers which can come with the new technology so first is that the police will need to be trained so that they recognize a new 5g enabled crimes so all of these new crimes that will arrive from the ad advent of 5g these need to be brought in theory and police need to be trained for them so that they can identify them they know that such kind of attacks can happen then training programs focusing on such crimes must be developed and this includes identifying potential scenarios for new types of crimes and their prevention right so this needs to take care, uh, uh, take place wherein training programs need to be initiated so that at least the law enforcement agencies are aware and ready to deal and combat with these attacks then the government and telecom companies could think of setting up a 5g crime monitoring task force to monitor and identify new crimes and develop counter measures so it also uh, the author also adds responsibility on government and telecom companies which should keep a track of such nefarious activities which are taking place then create regulations that make it a crime for people to use 5g technology to commit crimes which says that the laws also should be updated enlisting that how 5g technology can be used to commit crimes they should be enlisted under the new laws and regulation should be created under them 
such a regulation could help prevent criminals from using stolen or counterfeit equipment since telecom companies will be able to track the location of the equipment and shut it down remotely. So these are the methods or the way forward that the authors is, uh, author is suggesting with respect to how we can tackle the new dangers that arrive with the new benefits of the 5G technology as well. So this was a discussion with respect to the 5G technology and its specific implications on the cyber security aspect and how our law enforcement agencies are placed to deal with them and how they can be further equipped to further deal with them properly. So with this, let's move on to our next article for the day. The next article which appears in the newspaper reads, women just shouldn't stop dreaming. Now this is a positive news appearing in the newspaper because first time in the country, 11 women drivers have been inducted as the DTC bus drivers in the uh, uh, national capital territory of Delhi. Now, this positive news can be cited in various uh, aspects of our answer writing with respect to GS1, where we study society and whenever we have a gender related question, we can cite this example or in GS4 as well. In the paper of ethics, if we see such kind of a situation, this example can be cited because it's a very uh, huge step wherein the first batch of 11 DTC women bus drivers has been inducted and the transport department has said that it plans to train 180 more women to become bus drivers with the DTC or the Delhi Transport Corporation. Now why is this a huge step because this will ensure or promote women's safety in public transport and this is done under the Mission Parivartan which is a joint venture between the government and automaker Ashok Leyland to induct women drivers to operate the DTC and cluster scheme buses. So this that is why this is a big step because when women would be the drivers of the buses it would encourage a safe atmosphere for women to ride in these buses as well and thereby encourage and promote women's safety in the public transport uh, sphere. So this is the news which we can make use of in our answers. So with this, we come to the end for today's session and we'll meet again tomorrow with the important articles from the newspaper. Thank you.